right, today's lesson, let's talk about probability, the uh, potential that something may or may not happen. It is a mathematical uh, opportunity that we need to look at. First of all, let's look at the uh, definition of probability. I already have this one written out so you can get used to my handwriting. Probability by definition is a measure of how likely something is to occur. And otherwise, you know, will it happen? Uh, you know, you can use probability and things like to determine everything from, uh, you know, if we flip a coin, how many times will it come up heads as opposed to how many times will it come up tails? That would be probability. Much more important concepts, of course, many, many more important concepts would be such as how likely is it that a building project, such as, you know, engineers when they're creating bridges, uh, how often or what's the probability of fatalities happening on this bridge because of uh, stress and fatigue to the bridge. So we actually compare and consider multiple probabilities when making decisions on things such as bridges. All right, the vocabula vocabulary and notation regarding uh, probability would be the next thing that we're going to look at. And there are a couple terms that we need to certainly uh, be familiar with, and I'll write those down. And if you wouldn't mind, if you'll write that down also in your notebooks, that would be extremely helpful. So the first word is outcome. Well, the outcome is the result of doing something one time. So let's put that down there. The result of doing something one time like one flip of the coin one roll of a, a die which is the singular for dice which is plural that's kind of interesting anyway but anyway the result of doing something one time one flip of a coin or one roll of a die you uh, that's defined by outcome. Now the next word there we're looking at is event. The term event refers to any outcome or group of outcomes. So that would be any outcome or group of outcomes. That would be an event. Uh, when we t think about the probability or the likelihood of flipping a coin on heads, then this is the event. The Again, that would be the any outcome of a group of outcomes. So again, when we talk about the probability of likelihood of something happening like flipping a single coin and, coin and how many times it would come up heads, then that would be the event. Now the P event in math, of course the P is a mathematical term here, it's a question about probability, it's written with an uppercase and the event that you're looking for in parentheses. So an example might be um, the uppercase P would be, again, it's uh, the event you're looking for in parentheses, which might be like heads for how many times it would be come up heads p heads now that also might be written as p and then of course heads that would be the correct notation mathematically p heads now theoretical probability Look at this, the B, P, the mathematical term P, probability in the event, equals to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. So the formula for theoretical probability would be the likelihood that a favorable outcome will occur when all the possible outcomes are considered and when any one outcome is just as likely to happen as another. 
Mathematically, this is found by taking the number of possible favorable outcomes again, what we want to happen in these situations, and we divide it. The numerator and denominator, so we divide it by the number of possible outcomes regarding our theoretical probability. Theoretical probability, let's look at some sample problems in this process, some sample problems with theoretical probability. The P heads means that what is the likelihood of flipping a coin, a coin just exactly like this that would have a tails and would have a heads. So what would be the likelihood of flipping a coin and it landing on heads? We know that a coin has two sides. Again, it has a head side and it has a tails side. So the total number of possible outcomes is what? It would be two because it either has to land on heads or it has to land on tails. When we know that a coin has one side, side that represents heads, which in this case, that would be, we're looking at it. So the number of favorable outcomes is one. To solve, we decide favorable outcomes by the possible outcomes. So what would that be? That would be 1 divided by 2, which would equal 1 half. So let's look at that. We're looking for, in a coin, flipping a coin and seeing where heads or tails, we're looking for heads as the favorable outcome then it's one, we have one head, we are dividing that by two possible outcomes, heads or tails, so that would be equal, is or equals one half. So we'd say P heads equals favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. Favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. Or we could also say that P heads would be one heads over two sides, and that again as a fraction would be P heads would equal one as our favorable outcome over two possibilities. That's P heads. Now P even is a very common way for a mathematician to write when rolling a die, that's or a number cube, let's think of it as a number cube, when rolling a number cube, what's the likelihood of rolling an even number? In order to do this we must look at a number cube and of course die, number cube, see if you can get a good look on that, and you know it has six numbers from having used number cubes before. Six possible numbers. Okay, so looking at a number cube we can see that it has six total sides and these sides represent all the possible outcomes. Six sides are all possible outcomes. Six is all possible outcomes. Okay. By looking again, we can certainly see that we have four even numbers. I'm sorry, we have of course three even numbers and three odd numbers. 
So the total number of even numbers would be what? It would be 3. The even numbers would be 6, 4, and 2. Those would be the possible even numbers. To determine the probability, we create a fraction and then we simplify it when thinking about this. So let's look how we might do this for P even. So we can P even. We can look at the favorable outcomes, which would be even, 2, 4, or 6, divided by the possible outcomes. And those would be 2, 4, 6, but also 1, 3, and 5. So let's look at that another way. Then P even would be 3 even numbers divided by 6 total numbers. Or in a fraction, we would do, it would look like 3 favorable outcomes divided by 6 possible outcomes. And so that would, we would always reduce fractions, don't we? So that would be 1 half of the time, you know, we would get a favorable outcome when looking at a, a number cube and rolling it. Of course, we could also write that as a decimal, and I bet you know how to do that. That would be 50% of the time, 50% of the time, same as we had when we had flipping the coin. All right, let's look at some more sample problems. You can uh, please put these on your paper as well in your notes so we can look at these. Some uh, other sample problems problems. Alright, P5. This is interesting. P5 means when rolling a number cube, what's the likelihood of rolling the number 5? That's a specific number. For the bottom of our fra fraction, it's simple to see that the number cube has six sides. Of course, we know that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, it has number cubes, has six sides. So the number of possible outcomes would be what? Six, one, two, three, four, five, or six. For our favorable outcome, it gets a little tricky in this question because five acts as a label for only one of the sides and not as a value. Your instinct may say that you think uh, 5 would be on the top of the fraction and solve for 5, but that wouldn't be correct. That would be incorrect in this situation. Instead, think about how many sides of the die are labeled with 5, which is, of course, what? That would be just 1. So that would be the numerator of your fraction. And then, of course, we're looking for all the possible outcomes, which would be 6. So P5 would equal 1 over 6. P3 or 4? Well, let's look. P3 or 4? We're asked to determine the likelihood of rolling a number cube and getting either a 3 or a 4 as a result. Possible outcomes remain the same with 6, so our denominator remains 6. Looking, looking closely at the number cube, we can see that there is 1, 3, and 1, 4 on the number cube. Okay? So our number of favorable outcomes, we have 1 and 1, which would equal 2. 
two possibilities of rolling a 3 or a 4. All right, let's place that as a fraction. A fraction of 2 6 can be reduced, can it? 2 in goes into 6 three times, so that we reduce down to 1 third. 1 third would be our answer for that problem. Now, P not 4, that's interesting. P not 4. What's our probability of not rolling a 4? Well, in this problem, we're looking at the likelihood that something will not occur. That's the first time we've seen this. So the possible outcomes for a number cube are still the same with 6. I'm going to still have 6 sides as potential outcomes. So now we're looking closely. We can see that the sides labeled 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 are all labeled as 4. So the number of favorable outcomes for this problem is 5 because 6, we have 6 sides and 5 of them are not labeled with the number 4. Let's go back over that again. We have, we're looking to see what is the possibility of not rolling a 4. What's the possibility of not rolling a 4? So we have a possibility of 6, 5, 1, 3, or 2. And that's five possibilities of giving us the uh, likelihood that we were looking for. So it's 5 over 6. 5 out of 6 times is the possibility of not rolling a 4. The probability, of course, is greater. Now, probability by the numbers. Probability by the numbers will be our next thing that we'll look at together. As soon as I can get this straight. All right, by calculating probability, we can determine how likely an event is before we even act. If we find a probability or possibility, probability or zero, we can be assured that there is not a logical way for the event to happen based on the possible outcome. Let's see that again. Let's look at that again. If the possibility is zero probability, then it can't happen. So therefore, it ought to be 100% of the time, every time, that it can't happen. So when ro rolling a normal cube, uh, rolling a number cube, it's impossible to have the dice show 13. Why? There are not 13 numbers. There's just six on one number cube. So it is impossible. So mathematically, we would say P13 would equal zero. No possibility. And how many potentials are there? Zero. So the result is, again, zero, okay? If we find a probability of 1 over 2, it's just as likely that the event will occur as it is that it will not. So when flipping a coin, when flipping a coin that has a heads or a tails, we know that you're just as likely to land on the heads as you are to land on the tails. So that would be written as one half. Be written as one over two, one half. If we determine that the probability of an event is one, we know that it's going to happen every, every time. It was impossible with zero. It's going to happen every time with 1. So therefore, we can be certain that it will occur. So if we pay, place seven slips of paper that list all the days of the week in a box and draw one of the slips of paper, we can be sure that no matter which one we pull, the word on the paper will end in day. So like you know, Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if we are certain that any of the slips we draw out will have the word day in what we're looking at and what we're reading. So the P end in day would be a certainty. 
So we'll see the P end in day. is a certainty. So that would be, the probability would be, mathematically would be one. The probability would be one. Now, the next thing we're moving to would be fractions, percent or decimal is a probability. This is just a way to express uh, our probability, just like you express any mathematical, most mathematical terms can be, or, or numbers or answers, certainly can be solved as fractions, percents, or decimals. Uh, I'm pretty sure you already know how to do this, so let's just review this as such, a probability as a fraction, percent, or a decimal. Remember that uh, fractions, percents, and decimals, again, are interchangeable. That means one you know, a fraction is as good as a percent, a decimal is as good as a fraction, uh, decimals, are, they're all interchangeable. They can be used in, you know, any one of them can be used and means the same thing for all. To convert or change a fraction, fraction to a decimal, we divide, decimal, we divide the numerator by the denominator. Again, the numerator is the top, denominator is the bottom. So to convert a fraction to a decimal, we divide the numerator by the denominator. And 5, 6, as you can see, when you divide that out, when you make it a decimal, it's 8.3333. Generally, most people round those things off to two places, but we'll go all of it right now. So it'd be 83333. Okay? To convert a decimal, which is the 0.8, 3333 three, three, to a percent, we need to multiply by 100, move by 100. I always found that easy by just thinking of my places as tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So 10, 100, I would move it to 8.3, move it two places, and this indicates hundreds, percent. So that's writing in fractions, decimals, and percentages.